I'm a huge fan of connection pools, but like any pool, if you put too many things in there, the sharks will come swimming. <laughs> Connection pool overload. Here's the question that came in. <laughs> I love that you know, people have heard me spouting about connection pooling for so long or very good if you go to YouTube and search for Toon Kupalas, uh, who's one of the real world performance experts inside Oracle. He does a fantastic video on connection pooling and he's also involved in ops hours. <laughs> yeah, we've been bashing people for not using connection pools so long that the first sentence here is someone defending themselves. <laughs> so I promise. We are not one of those sites that thinks thousands of connections to a database is a good thing. But we have hundreds of apps. So even with each having a very modest connection pool, we can't see a way of avoiding huge session counts. We're looking for ideas. Let's take a little trip down memory lane as to why connection pooling is good and how to tackle this problem for this particular customer. So the original problem was back in the day when, especially in the client server day, you had one machine, it connected to a database and it got one foreground process or one database session assigned to it. And that session sat with that laptop or that machine for the life of the user using that application. If you had 10 people connected, you had 10 sessions logged on the database. And in the days of small user communities, generally most applications are running just inside small businesses, etc. That's not a drama. Of course, then as computers, technology and in particular databases got more and more popular, now you had applications with many, many users trying to log into the database, and that was a drama. It generally didn't crash the database, I just did this for dramatic effect. But the reality is, it's not actually a database issue, it's more of an operating system issue. If you've got tens of thousands of database sessions, that's tens of thousands of operating system processes, if everyone gets their own dedicated session. It's hard work for an operating system to manage that, not in terms of volume, but you need to think about the fact that the OS has to constantly cycle through all of those sessions, all those processes, effectively allocating, you know, seeing, do they need a slice of the CPU? Do they need to be serviced for an IO interrupt, etc.? It's just a lot to ask of anything, in particular an OS scheduler, to manage tens of thousands of processes that all are randomly gonna come up with requests for CPU, memory, etc., etc. It's a big burden. So what do we do? we invented the concept of connection pools. And this, the facility is fairly simple. That is any given user, whether they're directly connected to the database or coming in through the internet, et cetera, is unlikely to be asking questions of the database 100% of the time. They're doing what we do. We do a bit of work, we pause, do a bit of work, we pause. So we allocate a pool, hence the term connection pool, of sessions and they get shared amongst the processes. So these three people are currently active and they're using a session each. At the moment they finish working with the database, they're you now, for example, rendering a port to the screen, we free up them for other sessions to get it. And so, so on and so on, we have a much smaller set of sessions and many, many users, whether they're internet users, PC users, you know, et cetera, they all get to share that common pool of database sessions. Very, very intelligent way of maximizing the use of your database. You actually get far more throughput with a smaller number of sessions. It sounds counterintuitive, but what happens is what you wanna do is never have your database overloaded with sessions. You should have your application servers doing the management because each application server might only have to manage say two or 300 programs and it controls which ones get an access to the database pie by having connection pooling at the database level. That's what this customer has done. They've done the right thing. They've got applications using connection pools, but the new problem is this. You build an application in Java or C Sharp or Node, et cetera. You deploy that on 10 or 11 application servers, and those application servers will have a connection pool typically connecting to some sort of schema on your database. That's application number one that's released to the outside world. In these modern times of microservices or you know, modular components, SOA, et cetera, then what happens is, of course, you'll have another application and it will have its own connection pool and another application. It'll have its own connection pool and another and another, et cetera, et cetera. So you've done the right thing on an application by application basis. You've said, I might have countless users using this application, but the application itself will have a connection pool. That's fine, 
But once you've got a thousand applications or a thousand microservices, then you've got dramas because each one of those is now running a connection pool and we're back in the same problem. We have oodles and oodles of database sessions, the vast majority of them idle, but effectively they're idle because we had to compartmentalize each set of sessions for each application because each one is running its own connection pool. In fact, here is the AWR report from this particular customer. They assure me they're using connection pools and yet look at this, 10 thousand database sessions simply because I think they got you know a connection pool of say 50 or even less than that for each application hundreds and hundreds of application and boom there you go thousands of sessions that's going to make your database and your operating system struggle this is one of the solutions that I would propose and um, I propose it sort of with some enthusiasm now and great enthusiasm shortly let me explain the database resonant connection pool or DRCP we invented this back in, I think, Oracle 12, maybe 11.2, really designed for people using PHP on websites. Because one of the things that PHP generally does is every time it comes to the database, it does a connection request, it connects, does some work, and disconnects. And as we know, things that are very expensive in the Oracle database are starting a new connection and ending a connection. So we wanted to avoid that. So for PHP applications that didn't natively support their own connection pooling, we built one for them. It's the database resident connection pool. And what that is, is effectively, we create a pool of sessions that is managed not by the application servers, but by the database itself. It starts up a pool of servers, and then applications connect to these pools. And in particular, as I said, it was generally about PHP. PHP says, I want to connect. We don't really do a database connection. That connection is simply um, ignored and we get funnel, we get sent to one of these sessions. The database manages the sessions if they're busy or not. The PHP website does its work and it, it disconnects. We simply ignore that and we return the session to the pool. So in that way, for applications that didn't even support the concept of connection pooling, we could give them something that would still let them have incredibly scalable applications at the database level. So rather than the pool being managed by the application tier, it's being managed by the database itself. And it's really easy to actually set one of these things up. You can go to DBA C pool info, info. It shows I've got, you know, for example, in this case, I've set one up, which can be 40 minimum size four. It's currently inactive, but literally this is all you do. You simply configure the pool for how many sessions you want to have. And you say, start the pool job done. You've now got a set of database sessions running in a connection pool sort of setup that's managed entirely by the database as opposed to the application tier. How do application tiers get access to those sessions as opposed to just normal database sessions? All they really have to do is change their connection facilities. So in your tnsnames.ora or your easy connect syntax, you'd simply say, I want to go to a pooled server. So I think another. So for example, in um, JDBC, I can simply say, connect localhost, PDB1, and get one of the database resident connection pool facilities as opposed to my own connection pool or a dedicated connection. So it really is that easy. Now that the database is managing it, you could happily have even environments that do have support for connection pools, Java, et cetera, C Sharp, rather than each application having its own connection pool, they can now share a connection pool by talking to the database resident connection pool. How do you choose what size to make your pools then? If you're gonna have one pool that manages for lots of applications, what's the good size? The way I'll do it is I would say, align it with Ash data and V$ sys metric. One of the cool things you'll find in V$ sys metric and obviously your active session history reports is it'll give you the number of average active sessions in your database. Typically, if you've got say 10 CPUs, your average active sessions might be say six. So you might choose to create a database resident connection pool of say seven or eight. That way you know that you're underneath your CPU limits, but you're above what your average active sessions are. That's probably a good starting point. Obviously, if the number of active sessions goes above your CPU count, then you've got some dramas because it probably means you're underpowered on your server. But simply looking at beta assist metric for your average active sessions is a great way of starting on how big I should choose that initial database connection pool. Now, from time to time, you may exceed those limits, but and therefore people have to wait. But that's a good thing. That's what you want. You want people queuing outside the database if the database is stressed. 
if you have people queuing inside the database when the database is stressed, you know what happens then? Your database gets more stressed and people get worse and worse service. The reason I said I'm enthusiastic about it now, but super pumped about it shortly, is I can't give you specific details, but in a soon and upcoming release, there are a number of improvements to the database resident connection pool, which make it even better for being a one size fits all connection pool strategy even for those environments that do support connection pooling. Uh, you'll see some cool things coming up in a future release that will probably be announced at Cloud World. So keep your eyes open for that.